Hey guys, and welcome to Rufus and Doofus. Chico here today, and Rufus is somewhere around, but I don't know. I guess he doesn't want to participate today. He's uh, a little bit rambunctious. I don't know what's up with him. Ever since he's been feeling good, he's like in a world of his own, just enjoying life. So uh, he may come over, though, when he smells something or hears something. But in any case, what am I up to today? <clears throat> well, obviously, I'm not at the RV. And I'm uh, where I live right now. And the place is starting to look sparse because I'm getting rid of stuff and uh, uh, just anticipating that move into the RV. But what have I got for you today? Today, I've got a recipe. Yes. Now, this is for people that like bread. And I'm not just talking white bread. I'm talking that real nice, crusty, bakery-type artisan bread. Yes, and it's very, very easy to make. Okay, the only thing you're going to need is flour, instant yeast, salt, and water. That's it. Now, those are the ingredients just for the bread. Okay, you're also going to need some sort of a container like this with a cover, probably a nice Tupperware container about that big. You're going to need some measuring spoons, a measuring cups, and uh, a Dutch oven. A Dutch oven that's oven proof. Both the lid and the Dutch oven itself have to be oven proof. Now in my case, I'm going to use a uh, corningware dish, which is deep with a glass lid, and it's all oven proof. And the reason I'm going to do that is just because I want to show you guys that it doesn't have to be a Dutch oven. It can be something comparable, but it has to be very oven proof and it has to be fairly hefty, okay? And obviously you're gonna need an oven that goes up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's get started. We're gonna grab our bowl over here and our one cup measuring cup. And we're gonna start, oh sure, now you're here. Say hello Rufus, say hello you big beautiful dog you. He is doing so well. We're gonna start with three cups of flour, and I'm not gonna pack it, all right? I'm just gonna scoop it in there, shake off the excess, and that's it. So one, two, and three, all right? So we got our three cups of flour in there. This is bread flour. You can use all-purpose flour if you want. But this is bread flour, all right? So we're gonna set that aside. We're done with our measuring cup for now. And now, I am going to take some yeast. This is instant yeast. It's the same stuff you find in the market that comes in the little packets. And the little packets will work just fine, okay? Uh, you can use the whole one, but what we're gonna use is 1 8 of a teaspoon of yeast. So that's it, that's all that's going there. Putting it in. Very easy so far, right? One eighth of a teaspoon. Then we're going to take and we're going to put in two teaspoons. Well, actually, I'm sorry, one teaspoon of salt. All right, just regular old plain salt. And if you're a little over, it doesn't make any difference. But there you go. There it is. One teaspoon of salt. Pretty easy so far. Nice clean hands, you notice? I didn't do anything that's gonna get my hands dirty or anything else dirty at this point. Got a wooden spoon or whatever else you might have, and I'm gonna use the handle. And I'm just gonna mix that yeast and salt into the flour. Just like that, all right? Okay, easy so far. And now, our liquid ingredient. This is, this is special, this is H2O, otherwise known as water. Doesn't have to be filtered, but you know, you don't want to use swamp water either, okay? No toilet water, just good water, clean water. And we're gonna add this to the flour. One and a half cups of warm water. Got that? One and a half cups. Add that in. We're done with that. Still got clean ends. Then I'm gonna take my spoon, handle, and I'm gonna stir that. I'm just stirring. I want to get the moisture 
incorporated into the flour. Yep. So, Okay, that's what it should look like, all right? Still got clean hands, you notice that? All right, no kneading, no nothing. Now, we're gonna put the lid on, all right? And we're just gonna let that set at room temperature for about 12 to 24 hours. If you wanna let it set longer, you can put it in the refrigerator up to five days okay but before you're gonna break it or bake it bring it out for at least four or five hours so real simple but we're gonna be baking bread real quick all right guys Rufus and I are back yes we are we just went for a little ride he had to do all his business and we are here to complete our bread baking and if you remember in part one we didn't get dirty at all so here's our dough and this is after about nine hours. And you can look and see it's kind of really nice and squishy. Very nice. That's perfect. That's the way it's supposed to look. And it's a very sticky dough. Yeah, this one's a sticky dough. So now we are going to get our hands a little dirty, but not as bad as you think. All right, so I've got my bowl of dough. I've got a little bit of flour. Okay. I've got my scraper. I've got a spatula to get the dough out, and I've got a piece of parchment paper, and a bowl that I'm going to temporarily put the dough in with the parchment paper, and right now I have my oven heating to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, very important, and I also have my Corningware um, dish in there with the lid and it's completely oven proof and that's going to stay in there and get up to temperature and it's also going to be 450 degrees before we put anything in it so let's get going here first we're going to take a little bit of flour and we're going to sprinkle it onto our cutting board or whatever you've got to put flour on just going to spread that out a little bit okay Wow, look at that. Yeah, it's not bad, huh? Okay, now we're going to take our dough and we're going to drop it onto this floured surface. Okay. Just like that. All right, notice I still haven't got my hands dirty. A little bit more flour on top here. Not a lot. Just a little bit. Okay, and I'm just going to push down on it slightly, just like that. And if you notice, my hands still aren't a mess. All right, so now I'm just going to take this, all right, and scrape the, the table, and I'm going to fold the dough in on itself, just like that. One, two, three four okay so it's manageable and it's not sticking to my hands all right so perfect I still don't have a mess on my hands notice that's all we're gonna do now we're gonna take our bowl we're gonna put our parchment paper in there and we're gonna drop this with the the the, the fold sides facing up okay that's going to be facing up. So I'm going to plop that right in there, just like that. Okay? That's all I had to do. Clean up. It's just a matter of scraping the excess flour that we just had. That's all there is to that. Okay? 
Look at that. That's all that's on my hands. I'm gonna go wash my hands, and I'll be back when that uh, when that pan, that the Corning Weird pan, gets to be 450 degrees. Now remember, you're probably gonna use a Dutch oven if you have one, but anything that's uh, large or large enough for that dough, and also has to be oven proof with a tight sealing lid. Don't go away. Okay guys, I got the pan out of the oven. It's 450 degrees, that thing is scorching hot. So be careful when you're doing this. And I, all, all this pan here on the bottom is for so I don't burn the table and I got something to carry it with. Now normally, I would be doing this right over by the oven. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower this baby right in there. We're gonna put our glove on and we're gonna cover this right up. You don't have to get the parchment paper all the way in there. And then I'm gonna go and put this in the oven. And while I do that, while this is cooking, I'm gonna go find my sunglasses, which I cannot find anywhere. Went out with Rufus for a little bit. I don't know where the hell I put them, but hopefully I'll find them between now and then. So we'll see you in a little bit. Bye-bye. Okay, our bread is in the oven. It's gonna cook for 30 minutes. Right now it's quarter after five, so I'm gonna let it cook for 30 minutes. So at quarter of six, I'm gonna pull that bread out. And at that point, we're gonna remove it from the pan and remove the parchment paper. And if I wanted a little bit more golden brown, I'm gonna put it back in the pan without the lid on and put it in the oven for another 10 or 15 minutes or whatever it takes to get that nice golden brown. Now, um, I know the question is gonna come up. Can we add things to this bread? We can, but we have to be careful what we add. Uh, the recipe is kind of strict. It's a little bit non-forgiving. You can't play with it too much. So you have to stick to the three cups of flour, okay? Uh, uh, one and a half cups of warm water, one eighth of a teaspoon of yeast, and one teaspoon of salt. That's all that goes in it. Now, at the point where I put it in the bowl here, before I put it into the uh, oven, you know the hot pan while it was in this bowl what you can do is add some seeds on top maybe some sesame seeds or some poppy seeds or I like to put sunflower seeds on it and it's uh, it makes for a nice presentation and also gives the bread a different look you can use different flours I used white bread flour you can mix some whole wheat which are white flour you can do that and experiment with it until you get it to the point that you want. You could do it with rye flour, um, and you can add certain ingredients into the bread, maybe some um, some garlic, things like that, or some herbs, but you don't wanna really add anything that's gonna affect the moisture content too much. Okay, so th those dried herbs and such won't affect the, the moisture content. I saw someone make it um, and they added sugar, uh, it seemed to have worked all right, and they put raisins and cinnamon in there. I don't know if it came out very sweet like a dessert, but I'm sure it looked like it came out pretty well. I didn't get to taste it. So that's it. Uh, as I said, the bread's in there. We've got about th uh, 28 minutes to go, and I'm going to go look for my sunglasses because I have no idea where I put them, and they're expensive ones. They're close to their soles, so I don't want to uh, close to the mar. I don't want to lose those. Yeah. Well, hopefully they're my last stop. I may have taken them off, which was at somebody's house. So I'm going to run over there, and by the time I get back, that bread should be done. Any other questions, please leave uh, your comments below, and I'll be happy to answer them. And as I said, I really, really think you're going to like this bread. So hang in there. See you in a bit. Well, the bread is still baking and it smells wonderful. And the reason I got back on camera before the bread is done is because I found my sunglasses. They were on my head. And um, none of you guys said anything. So that was a little embarrassing. And I almost thought of redoing the whole video because of that. But then I got thinking, I said, kind of funny. <laughs> I can't believe I didn't look up there. Oh well. 
in any case, I'm glad I found them. Yeah, they're expensive glasses. So, but the bread will be done in another 15 minutes. Don't go away. And like I said, it smells great in here. Mmm, fresh bread. All right, guys, the 30 minutes is up. And this is scorching hot. We're going to take this out of the pan and the parchment paper. Look at that puppy, huh? We're going to drop it back in there without the parchment paper. And I'm going to go put this back in the oven until it turns nice and golden brown. Don't go away. All right, guys, the bread is out of the oven. Yes, it is. And it's scorching hot, this thing. Yep. So let's get her out of here. Put our gloves on. We don't want to burn ourselves. Yep. Okay. And there it is. Put that on our cutting sheet over here. Get rid of this. And there it is. Look at the color of that, huh? Isn't that beautiful? Now, you can double the recipe if you have a bigger pan or pot, you know. But everything's the same if you double the recipe. So, uh, how do you know when it's done? Well, here, listen. Hear that? That hollow sound? That means it's done. Plus the color. Isn't that gorgeous? So, it's too hot to cut yet. Unless you really like hot bread. But, you know, if you cut it when it's hot, all the steam comes out. And it uh, sometimes it collapses the bread, but most of the time it just makes it a little drier. So you want a little moistness in the in the crumb. But let's let this sit for a few minutes, and then we'll cut it, and we'll show you what it looks like inside. Oh yeah, professional, and you can do it in your RV. Yes, or in your gas grill. Yeah, you can do it in there. Okay, guys, the bread has cooled down a bit, but it's still nice and warm. Oh, man, I'm telling you, what a beautiful little loaf. Now, I'm going to use a serrated knife, and I want you to listen real close, okay? I hope that you can hear it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? Gorgeous. Perfect crumb. And if you uh, let it set longer, like maybe 24 hours, the holes in the crumb, they get bigger. Oh, yeah. So, I haven't had carbs in all week, actually, since last Saturday. So, I'm going to break the rule today and try this bread. Mmm. Smells awesome. Oh, wow. Absolutely delicious. Mmm. The aroma is phenomenal. The texture of the crumb is great, and the crust on the outside is just beautiful. Mmm. I love bread, so for me to give up carbs is very hard. I shouldn't be doing this. But, I hope you guys try the recipe, and if you do, and when you do, please, please be sure to let me know how it turned out. Okay? Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you like the bread. Take care, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.